Far too long, WorkSafe BC WCAT have denied due process when dealing with the claims from injured workers. They have many rules, regulations and procedures, etc. purporting to deal with claims fairly and appropriately. Rules, regulations and procedures only applied when it suits WorkSafe BC WCAT's purpose to deny a legitimate claim. Injured workers have enough stress when injured. We do not need the stress and bullying of WorkSafe BC WCAT contributing to an already stressful situation. WorkSafe WCAT's practice state sponsored bullying. WorkSafe BC WCAT's process is broken. It does not work for the worker, the employer, or the public. Appeals to the minister responsible for WorkSafe BC are pointless. The advice from the Honorable Shirley Bond's office trusts the process. Why? The process is broken. The process is similar to if one was accused of a crime and the police and Crown Prosecutor investigate the charge, add their full facts to support the accusations, then convict the person and sentence them to death at the conclusion of the investigation. Evidence from the accused is not to be considered and treated as clutter impeding the process to conviction and punishment. Yes, death is the result for someone who works safe WCAT denies a claim. A woman I knew injured at work and her obvious injuries denied was so devastated by the refusal of, the, of a fair assessment of her claim, essentially gave up on life, and her health rapidly spiraled downhill to her death. Of course, hers and other similar deaths do not show in the WorkSafe WCAT records. That's one untimely death I personally know of in the last four years. How many more have suffered anguish and hardship induced by WorkSafe BC and WCAT? WorkSafe knows they're a world-class organization. They know that because they were reported into the bungling of their investigation into the 2012 sawmill fires when 41 were injured and four deaths occurred, says they're a world-class organization. They, are even, they even provide an evaluation to support their claim. If one applies a simple metric to the evaluation, they rate a bit better than 50%, barely a pass. One would expect the world-class organization to do better, especially when they get to rate themselves. Examples of their self-assessment. The rules are widely known and understood. <clears throat> 75%. One would assume if the rules were understood, they would be following the rules. The same generous self-assessment for the regulator is respected by industry, labor, and trusted by the general public, 75%. These figures come from pages 62 and 63 of the WorkSafe BC Review and Action Plan Status Report, released July 1st, 2014. I have not found one employer that is satisfied or expressed respect for WorkSafe BC. When they hear WorkSafe made 800 million profit, more than the amount needed to be set aside for future liabilities in 2013, they are shocked and wonder why they pay high premium, and in a sense when they learn how much the senior executives absorb of their premiums for themselves. The WorkSafe BC, the WorkSafe BC Review and Action Plan Status Report makes 43 recommendations for changes at WorkSafe. They are primarily specific to the inadequate investigation process, a broken process. Other parts of WorkSafe are as or are more broken. It is time for a full investigation in a WorkSafe, an investigation by the people not handpick friends of WorkSafe and the minister responsible. Who did WorkSafe poll to arrive at the ratings? Not people I know. Even with their creative assessment, they could only muster a bit better than 50%. But they are a world-class organization. We know that because they tell us they are. The WCAT portion of the WorkSafe WCAT group continues the misrepresentation of fairness and openness of the system when they claim to be independent of WorkSafe. They can't be when WorkSafe pays their operating costs and includes including their wages. WorkSafe even advertises job vacancies at WCAT. After reading the WorkSafe Board of Directors Manual and other documents produced by WorkSafe and WCAT shows many interesting cross-links. The WCAT independence from WorkSafe BC is an illusion meant to lull the people in a false expectation they would de be de treated with due process. When one has to put the full personal facts of their claim before the public to ensure a fair assessment of one's claim, the system is broken. Minister Braun, CEO Diane Miles, 
The process you support is hidden and behind closed doors. If it's broken, it is apparently not fair for the claimant. Not even allowing the claimant full presence or right to cross-examine false facts. I am prepared to put my facts to the true people's court, the court of public opinion. Are you prepared to put the actions of WorkSafe WCAT before the same court? The facts of my claim may be those of an individual, but the generation of false facts, refusal to accept evidence of standard operating method of WorkSafe WCAT for many other injured workers. Injured workers in BC are not well served. Employers' premiums are not being used properly. They do not ensure safe working environments in BC, nor do they benefit the injured worker. The waste of time, energy expended by workers, employers, medical practitioners, and others is costing BC millions in lost productivity. The WorkSafe BC WCAP process is broken, broken beyond repair. British Columbians deserve better than this from the Crown Corporation. The people of BC are mad as hell at WorkSafe BC. We will not take it anymore.